All right, in this video lesson, we're gonna be going through perfect competition for A-level economics. And the objectives are, in this lesson, we're just going to define perfect competition and explain the importance of its underlying assumptions. Explain and illustrate with diagrams of the short run and long run equilibrium, price and output for the firm and the industry, and look at how the model adjusts from the short run to the long run. And I think in the next lesson, we'll probably do the uh, the, it's about the evaluate the efficiency of perfectly competitive markets. So let's talk about what perfect competition is. Now this is, this is a quick warm up you can do on Think Economics. This is uh, under Exercises 1.5.1 Cost Table, which you may have already done. But it's a good reminder to look through to say, okay, well, if our selling price is is 10 pounds and our fixed cost is is 20 pounds. The, the question is, where is profit maximized? And you will remember that profit will be maximized as long at, at the point, the last point, at which the marginal revenue is higher than the marginal cost. And we know that the selling price is 10 pounds, so that's our marginal revenue. And the marginal cost increases to, you know, from 7 to 9 to 11. So after quantity 7, we would expect the profit to go down. And that, and let's just have a look at that here. So we, you know, you add in the you know, the, the variable fixed cost and the total costs, you can work out the revenue, uh, which just goes up. And we'll notice, of course, the revenue going up as the price is the same. The marginal revenue is always the same. And so the profit will be maximized, as we, as we guessed, at quantity 7. And without knowing it, this is actually looking at the, the perfect competitive model. And, uh, and so that's why this, this table is sort of a good warm-up to say, well, what's happening with that perfectly competitive model. So first, let's talk about what perfect competition is. Um, <clears throat> perfect competition is trying to simulate some, uh, something which is perfectly price competitive. That's what the perfect means, is that you're competing on price, and, that, and that's the most important thing. We assume profit maximization as we do in the other market structures. And we're gonna see how, where, where it is that the profit maximization point happens, it's the same in all our market structures. I use this, this picture of, of an apple <laughs> being grown because I, I really like apples and I really like the idea of apples being this idea of perfect competition. And we'll talk about why it is that the assumptions of, a, of an apple orchard fit the assumptions of the perfect competition model. So the, the first key thing to, to make sure we have is the assumptions. We always want to start with the assumptions when we're looking at these new models. And we want to say, what would we describe a market where we only compete on price? And so the, these are the main assumptions to look at. Number one is we've got identical products or homogenous products. What that means is that our products cannot be differentiated they can't, there's no difference between our products and our competitors' products. So think about a, an, apple, an apple orchard. They're growing a certain type of apple. Maybe they're growing like a gala apple. That gala apple is the same as any other grower who's also growing gala apples. You cannot brand, you cannot make your apple sort of different from, from your competitors. That's a, that's a really important part of the, uh, of the assumption of, of this market. The next one is low barriers to entry and exit. So it's easy to come in and leave the market. There are many buyers and sellers. And we have perfect knowledge. Perfect knowledge means that you, you can't really lead on your customers. Your customers know what your product is. Your customers know what your competitors' prices are. There's no sort of opportunity to sort of, I don't know, sort of, sort of stretch the truth a bit like you know if, if if you're selling something your customers know it and and they 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 just know you, you can't sort of you know bs them a bit um basically what we're saying is, is contestability there are no barriers to entry or exit in the long run and now short run barriers may exist because of the fixed factor of production but we're saying that you know beyond that sort of short run period we are we're, we're going to say that you know as many firms can enter this market as they, as they want to Right, now here's the thing. When we're looking at sort of the cost and revenue for this, we, we look at that first assumption, the homogenous products. Because our products are completely the same as any other competitor's products, any change in price causes demand to fall to zero. 
because consumers have a lot of choice. There's perfect knowledge between our products and the competitors' products. Other firms, if they have cheaper products, which will mean that the product that you are selling is the same as your, and because the product that you're selling is the same as your competitors' products, if they have cheaper products, you will lose out all of your demand. And so the question is, what does that demand curve look like? What is the type of curve that is so sensitive to price that you'll lose everything if you drop your price just a little bit? And the answer to that is, is a, a very elastic curve, a very sensitive curve. You might say that if it's if you lose all your demand by changing your price, that's a perfectly elastic curve. And a perfectly elastic curve, remember, is a straight line across. Remember, it looks like an E. Yeah, you sort of have the bottom axis, and you sort of imagine there's something at the top. That 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 line across is is like you know the middle of the E, the perfectly elastic demand curve. And that P is your price. That P is your demand curve. So you can say that that there's our demand, perfectly elastic demand. A little a little trick here is that revenue is price times quantity. Average of anything is just whatever it is divided by the quantity. And so average revenue is a new thing we're looking at. Average revenue is just equal to price. And so average revenue is actually it's actually our demand curve, really. Um, we're now going to sort of substitute the, the price that consumers are willing and able to purchase at any given price level, which is demand. We're just going to now say is our average demand on, on these diagrams. And, um, and because of a certain sort of glitch of mathematics, or even just to think about it, is that if you increase your quantity by a unit each time, you always make the same price in this scenario. So, so not only is your average demand just constant, you would also say that the additional, sorry, the, yeah, sorry, the average revenue is constant. The, the additional revenue that you make by increasing by one unit is also constant, and it, it's the same level. So you, you would call that our marginal revenue, right? So that, that's the important thing on, on these on these theory of the firm diagrams. We're going to be starting off with this demand is a we're going to start with demand and AR, and then look at MR. And in a perfectly competitive market, because of homogeneous products, the the demand is just a straight line across. Now we remember where is profit maximized. So we've we've already done this. We, we've looked at that even that that earlier exercise on think economics is a way of looking at that. If we have a set price, we we maximize our profit where the marginal cost is equal to the mar the marginal revenue. And in, in this case here, the price is equal to AR is equal to MR. As long as that line is straight across, perfectly elastic, then the AR will equal our MR. And so therefore we produce this quantity Q because any quantity below Q I think there's a little animation here. Yeah, any quantity below Q, the average, this is the marginal revenue is higher than our marginal cost. So by increasing our quantity, we will make those little profit bits, right? But then after Q, the marginal cost is higher than the marginal revenue. And so therefore our, our profit, although will be still positive, will be less than maximum. Just remember like we, we did here, right? This, this bit here. Is that after once marginal cost is higher than marginal revenue, the profit still still positive, but it but it's it, it's going down. So um so yeah that that's that that that's a rule now we can say that you know profit is maximized where where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. Now the important thing to be able to illustrate in these diagrams is the short run equilibrium, illustrating where is profit or possibly where is their loss. And then the transition to the long run. So what does what does profit do, and how does profit actually change the dynamics of this of this model? And and then that will lead us to a new a new place where we have a new outcome in the long run, which is very different from the short run. So let, let's talk about that, and let's talk about how it is that we draw this. Now here's the typical thing with with perfect competition. To draw it out, you draw two two axes side by side, two graphs side by side. On the left hand side, we've got the market, which we're used to, right? We've seen this since since year one, right? You know, price and quantity, supply and demand. On the right side, we've got the firm, where we've got cost and revenue and output 
cost and revenue are now the substitute for the price because we're interested in the actual firm's cost and revenue curves. And the output is just the, the output not of the market. It, it, it's the output of a, of a particular firm. So here's, here's how you do it, all right? Side by side, and you say, um, okay, uh, where is the price determined? Well, we know that you know from year one that the price is determined where supply is equal to demand. So there's sort of our market price or market quantity. We're interested in the market price as a firm, and that can just sort of translate straight over. So you can actually just draw that, that line straight on over, and whatever the price is in the market is going to be the price for our firm. In a perfectly, in a perfectly competitive market, perfect competition market, the, the demand curve is perfectly elastic. So therefore, at the price level, we have this AR equals MR. We just, we just assume that you know, it's just taken as read now that the demand is AR. And if it's a straight line, horizontal line, then AR is equal to MR. And then we can then we can throw in the the cost curves. And what we do is we start with the the Nike swoosh, the marginal cost, and then we put in the average cost, making sure that we follow the rules, which means that the the, the minimization of the average cost occurs where it crosses the marginal cost. And then and then the, the next thing we do is we say, okay, well. Where's our output, right? Well, assuming assuming that this firm is profit maximizing, we know that the profit maximizing quantity will be here where marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue. So that's going to be our quantity. And the final thing we do is we say, what is our average cost at this quantity? And it's really easy to find out because we, we've, we've said MC equals MR drawn down here to make this Q1 and then where that Q1 sort of vertical line crosses, the AC actually gives us our average cost. So that means that this area, a rectangle with the width from zero to Q1, the number of products that we're selling, and a height of P1 minus AC, which is the difference between our, our, our price and our average cost, that is our, is our economic profit. That is the profit uh, that, that is that is, abnor that, that is abnormal profit. You could call it. It is it is profit above and beyond our opportunity cost, as we as we could say. Because of course, in economics, whenever we draw these graphs, we are assuming that we're looking for a. Uh, if we see profit, it's it means that it's above and beyond the opportunity cost. We're talking about economic profit rather than accounting profit. One last thing, a little zoom in here, is that when you're drawing this graph, it's very important that you get this bull right. Is that the if you look at this, the the quantity line, the upward quantity line, will cross the average cost curve at a higher quantity than the minimized quantity of the average cost curve, because that occurs where MC crosses the average cost curve, and uh, and we're a bit beyond that. So it's very important to to be accurate with your drawing to make sure that when you you draw up to the average cost curve, you you draw it there and then you draw across. But do not draw it so that it looks like it's at the minimum point of the AC curve. That's it's a really good way to distinguish yourself to to show people that you know what you're talking about, to show the examiner that you know what you're talking about, to 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 make it very clear that this minimum AC point is nothing to do with our quantity. And that's why I say put this little bowl in this little bowl of like non-profit here, this non-profit sort of area where above it is sort of profit and over here is sort of like, you know, where the quantity is just this little profitless area, which is, um, which is just because, um, because we're not producing where, where AC is equal to MC, right? In, in the short run. So, um, so yeah, so that, that's the first one. This is the short run. Uh, this is the short run perfect competition model. To be honest, the only one you really need to master is this one on the right. Yeah. I mean, Occasionally you might see like they say, oh, well, like have have the market one next to the other one. But really, this is more of like a textbook thing. Like they always they always have this one on the left. And then it's like, well, what happens and how do the mechanics work? So it, it's the right hand side that you want to make sure you have that you can master that you can just draw out. You should, that That's a kind of diagram you should be able to just sort of draw without thinking about it, really. So but this model is useful. The side by side model is useful for describing how it is that you transition from the short run to the long run. And here's what happens, right? This is the story. You're in the short run here, in the world of perfect competition. You're making profit, 
but there are no barriers to entry. And there's perfect knowledge. So all the other people out there, they're seeing you make some money and they're like, oh, I, I think I'll get in on that. That increases the competition. It means that you supply and the market shifts to the right. Okay, because we know that more more competitors means that a rightward shift in supply. What that means is we now set a new a new price in the market, right? Higher quantity, higher higher market quantity, lower price, and that we can draw again straight over here, right? So we've got a new price in our market. The AR curve and the MR curve have both shifted down. They've just shifted down by the amount of the new price. What that means is we now have a new profit maximizing quantity where price equals, sorry, where MC equals M, MR is no longer there, it's now there. And so we now have a new average cost as well because our average cost at that point is equal to our price. So when it all is said and done, we take away the first bit, this is the long run perfect competition. And this graph here on the right is another one that you want to have mastered. You want to be able to just draw this out quite quickly to be able to say this is long run perfect competition. And um, and and yeah. So and and the thing is about this as well. Is, and now we can we can just say right. You know, conveniently it all crosses here, right? So that's where M equals M R. That's our quantity. That's you know, that's where we determine this quantity. And it's also the point where AC crosses the MC. So it's also the minimum of the MC. So it's an easier one to draw. You don't have to worry about that bowl in there. It's just a matter of, uh, of getting that right. Now, you have to be able to interpret what happens if costs change, right? So like, let's say that costs change. Let's say that this is, this is, our, this is our point. And let's say that we have an increase in variable cost, shifting up our MC and our AC. Well, you can still work the logic. You say, where is profit maximized? Profit is maximized where MC equals MR. By the way, don't don't worry about this one. You would usually have the 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 the, 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 the Nike swoosh nowhere near sort of your average or marginal revenue curve. So, so but it's the same thing in, in reverse. You say the MC crosses MR. You you just draw up or down, but now you draw up to the AC curve. And we say, well, that's our new average cost. And again, the difference, we're, not, we're now not covering our, our costs, our prices below our average cost. And so at that, that, that's an economic loss. That is, uh, that, that is now a condition where we're not making a profit. Uh, you know, we're, 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 not, we're, we're not even covering our opportunity costs. We're actually, you know, you add up all the money that we're making. Um, and actually, there's there's a much better option out there for us, right? So, um, so and of course, you imagine that firms will, will exit the market in that case, uh, which, which means, yeah, firms do exit the market. Supply curve shifts to the left. Um, the price then increases, and then as you can see, with the new higher price, we have a new uh, new quantity too, and, and it all sorts itself out again. That's kind of the that's kind of the mechanics of it. Really, the only one that you have to really know well is to be able to say if we're making profit explain how that attracts more firms to the industry. And as a result, the supply curve shifts right, price goes down and we reach this new equilibrium. Now, um, I think an apple orchard is a good example of perfect competition Be, uh, because, mostly because of the fact that uh, it's it's undifferentiated products, it, it homo homogenous products or identical products. Like I said, a gala apple is a gala apple no matter where, where, where you go. A little known fact, actually all varieties of a single apple, say gala or Braeburn or anything else, they're actually genetically identical to each other. They are all cloned from the same parent tree that was discovered however many years ago. So yeah, I'm flexing my apple growing knowledge there. Um, like I said, I am sort of into them. But, um, but, all, but also I think it's like low barriers to entry. You know, it's pretty, pretty easy to... To, I don't know, grow some apples, I guess. You know, you don't have to have like, you don't have to have like a degree in it. You don't have to, you don't have to like train for it. You just, you know, you plant some trees and then, you know, I guess within a few years they're, they're ready to go. So, so maybe some slight barriers to entry. Yeah, you got to have the farm as well. But, you know, like it's, it, it, it's compared to like Facebook or I don't know, like an airline, it's going to be fairly low barrier to entry. So I, I think it's a good one. Now we've already sort of gone through this. Economic profit versus normal profit. Remember, economic profit is different from accounting profit because of what 
Economists include as costs. Long story short, economists include the, the, the opportunity cost. So like on the Apple farm, if we're making 300,000 and we have these like, you know, paid costs of 280, we make this 20,000 pound accounting profit, but the owners of the firm could have earned 20,000 pounds from elsewhere. So the opportunity cost is 20,000. That, what that means is your economic profit is zero. So like, you know, if, if I said, hey, listen, I'm going to start an apple orchard um, and I'm making 20,000 and I could have been making 20,000 as an economics lecturer, it's like I'm no better off, right? So like, you know, it's like one or the other, you know, there's no great pull for me to become an apple grower if I'm making the exact same amount of money that I'd be making in my, in my, in my other job. Um, so norm, now normal profit is defined as making zero economic profit. You are covering your accounting costs but not your opportunity costs. So when you include your opportunity costs, you're making zero. Uh, the other way to define normal profit, it is, the, it is the level of profit that is necessary for firms to stay in the industry in the long run, which makes sense because, you know, if, if, if you are, if you're, if you're covering and only covering your opportunity costs, you're going to stay in that, in that business, right? You're not going to, you're not going to leave the business because, you know, if, if I've got an apple orchard, I'm making 20 grand and I've got this economics gig that I could be doing 20 grand with, I'll, I'll stay with the apple orchard as long as I can't be making more money elsewhere, right? And so that's this idea about economic profit. I, well, let's say a couple of pictures from a movie. Uh, normal profit is like meh profit, like this guy here. You know, you're paid just enough. Yeah, you're not happy. You're not, you're just, eh, okay. Like that's, that's the AC is equal to the AR. The minimum profit needed to keep the factors of production in their current use, which is to say to keep them, um, to keep that, that firm in the industry in, in the long run. Whereas abnormal profit is anything in excess of normal profit. That That's this one here, you know, very happy. This is good. You know, it's going to attract firms to the industry. It is, uh, you know, you're exceeding your opportunity costs, right? Um, right. Now, this is the last bit that we'll do in this video. But there's this this little bit you got to know where it's like, when should a firm shut down? When should it leave the industry? And so imagine, I'd like to think of an apple farmer, right? Imagine you're an apple farmer with the following considerations. The price of apples is five pounds per basket. That's what you get for selling them. The accounting profit at the current price is 10,000 pounds. The next best alternative career is a 20,000 pound salary. And the cost of producing a basket of apples is four pounds. What would you do in the short run? What would you do in the long run? And there, there are different answers, by the way. So you know, you know, trick question warning, different answers for the short run and long run. That's what we're going to sort of you know, explore here. Uh, let's see. Now, in the short run, a firm must decide if it should continue operating, even if it's making a loss. It will depend on what's happening with its variable costs. This is the only time you need to have an, an AVC, okay? So don't worry about it. It's really to do with the MC, the average cost, or the ATC, and the AR and the MR. But when we're talking about shutdown, it's not a bad idea to have the AVC in, which we should know. You know, it, it starts with the MC is, you know, at quantity one, it's the same as the MC. It bottoms out when it crosses the MC, and it, and it goes ever towards ATC, because of course, average fixed costs go ever towards zero, right? So, uh, so here's how we do it, right? We say, okay, let's say that you're making profit. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, here's, here's, here's my level, you know, maximize profit, maximizing quantity. There's my, there's my, um, profit level. You know, the conclusion is like, Hey, keep going. Yeah. Live long and prosper, right? Because you're making some money. So you want to be in that industry. Good for you. You know, and you know, there's no question about shutting down. If the price falls, you might not make any economic profit, but should they leave? Um, I think the answer to that is, is, is no. Because remember, if you're making zero economic profit, your abnormal profit is zero, but you're still making normal profit. So therefore, what you're doing is you're covering your opportunity costs and you, you're, you're kind of indifferent to leaving, I guess. You know, you know, I'll make my 20 grand in the Apple business. I'll make my 20 grand teaching economics, you know, one or the other. Doesn't matter to me. Might as well stay at the Apple business. Uh, now, if the price goes down, um, down to here, right? Uh, the firm will make a loss, right? This is, I think, the situation that we just saw earlier. We can calculate the loss. We can say that you know, there's our profit. 
there's our there's our profit maximizing quantity, but actually we're saying it's loss minimization quantity. It's still where MC equals MR. And um and we say, okay, well that's that's our loss. Um, but should we still stay in the market? Well, there is an argument that we should because we're still making what's known as contribution, right? There is this this area here, it's not shaded in, but like you could actually draw this over here from the average variable cost over. And what that area is, because this entire base, because everything from P from, from zero to Q2 and from zero to P2, that's all, th this whole area is revenue. And this bit here is is contribution, right? So you, you, you're making what's known as positive contribution, which is to say that your your price exceeds your variable cost, which means that in the short run, where your fixed costs, where, where your capital is the factor of production that's fixed, your fixed costs are paid, you paid your fixed costs, you might as well keep going, right? As long as you're making enough to cover the variable cost of production, keep on with it, yeah? Just because you're going to make a loss, I'm sorry, but hey, you might as well make as much as you can to minimize that loss, this is what we're saying here, right? But if it keeps falling the price, you can do another, um, you know, Profit maximization or loss minimization quantity, where a so MC equals MR. You can work out the loss, but once the price falls below the average variable cost, the firm doesn't even make any positive contribution. They don't even cover the variable cost of production. So at that point, it's like let's get out. Let's get, let's get out of this industry immediately, and uh, and not look back because. It doesn't even make sense to, to to produce any other products. You know, we've paid our fixed costs, and those are those are gone. Those are sunk costs. Um, I'm going to wake up this morning, and by the end of the day, will I have sold enough to, to cover the cost that it cost me to, to make the things I'm making today? If if it doesn't, then don't even bother. If you can cover the variable costs of the day, and they'll pay off your fixed costs or help to fix, if you cover cover your fixed costs, go ahead and do that. So this is sort of the I think the um, the summary here. You know, above P2, you know, if you can exceed your average total cost, you know, you're making abnormal profit, stay in the business and thrive. If it's between P1 and P2, you might be making a loss, but you're covering your variable costs. So you should stay open in the short run, but close in the long run. And if you're below P1, then you're not even covering your variable costs. You should just close down immediately. And that's kind of the shutdown, the shutdown consideration. When should you shut down, right? Um, we'll do efficiency considerations later on. So, uh, so yeah, to go back to this one, basically what we're saying is uh, they're, they're not making any abnormal profit. In fact, they're not even making normal profit because they're making 10,000 pounds accounting profit, 20,000 pounds of opportunity cost. So the opportunity cost is exceeding their, their, their accounting profit. That's negative economic profit. They should be getting out, right? So the next time that they can sort of shut things down, like the next long, short run to long run time horizon, this person should be like, right, it's time for me to get out of the old apple business. But because the cost of producing a basket of apples is four pounds each and the price of apples is five, you'll make a one pound contribution each, each basket that you sell. You won't cover your, you won't cover your fixed costs. You'll make a you'll you'll make a a negative economic profit, but hey, you know, if the alternative is not selling the five pound basket and paying the four pounds to produce it, well, you know that, that that's silly because that that's a pound that you've effectively not not earned. So, hope you found this helpful, and uh, and yeah, see you in the next video.